I have to say, Victory Monday sounds and feels a lot better, but that is not what we're talking about today as the Detroit Lions suffer their first loss of the season in week two of the NFL campaign against the Tampa Bay Bucks, 20 to 16, the final at Ford Field. It's loser Monday, Hobie. <laughs> it is a, that's not it. the I same think, feeling, you know, yeah. not the same feeling. I, you, I woke up this morning, didn't have the same, you know, confidence, the same just <laughs> Positivity oozing through my veins, like yeah. didn't have that. And Ben, morning. Ben mysteriously called off. At, like, I don't know why. Yeah, 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 yeah. PM yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There is this something is different planned. about you, Ken. Yeah. There's yeah. something different about this Lions team. But look at you. I don't no, know what it is. Are you I, embarrassed I, to be here? Is that what the glasses? <laughs> the eyebrows and the nose and the mustache. I, you know, I woke. You know, because the positivity just wasn't wasn't there this morning. I just I had to make a change. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is what happened. So I don't know. It, it's yeah. just yeah. Get used to it. So this is you trying to summon a win coming up against the Cardinals. It's like you know, hockey players grow beards when they are winning in the playoffs. I shave <laughs> when the Lions yeah. lose. It was the beard's fault, but not the mustache. <laughs> that's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, the mustache Dave is Campbell, not culpable. Don't take accountability. <laughs> it's Ken's facial hair. That's yeah. what it's got yeah, to be. Yeah, got but to guys, be. let's dive into this game. 20 to 16. The offense looked off to say the least against Tampa Bay. They had so many chances in this game. The defense made stop after stop, but also gave up some big plays at some crucial points in the game. What's your biggest takeaway from that week two loss? They're still struggling on third down. Week one, they got away, got away with it because they made enough plays in the red zone. But this week, same struggles on third down. Can't complete passes, not getting to short enough distances to run. And uh, the play calling was a little strange, too, because the Lions were running the ball well, and they let Jared Goff throw it 55 times. So, yeah, the struggles on third down with, with Josh Reynolds no longer here is the takeaway for me. Yeah, same thing for me as far as the run game. I, I'm not sure why we got rid of, away from the run game. If you look at the numbers, they still averaged five yards a carry. Yeah. There was uh, red zone uh, possessions where they didn't run the ball. Like I'm not sure what the idea was there, but it's something to do with Tampa Bay because last year, if you look at the two games Goff had, those were two of his four highest uh, pass attempt games. They did it again this week. I guess it worked last time, so maybe they. But at some point, when you were running the ball so well, just stick to the run. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be just the play calling. The, just the, the offense is in disarray. I mean, yeah. it really is. There's. Nothing is nothing is clicking together. The the play calling is all over the place. Jared Goff is all over the place. He's he's not reading the offense nearly as well as he was doing last year. He's you know the defense seems to know exactly where he's throwing it most of the time, and that guy's usually covered. Yeah. <laughs> and there's usually a guy open over here. Like Sam Laporta was open like a yep. hundred snaps yesterday. Mm -hmm. Never got the ball. I mean, so I just you know it's really frustrating to watch. But it just it, it does seem like the Lions came into the season with a really similar philosophy on offense and then the identity has been mixed so far mm -hmm. and Jared Goff is acting like it's last year and I think it's the, it's that shift that we talked about before the season they're now the hunted and there's a ton of tape on what Jared Goff did last year and he's got to make adjustments and he hasn't done that did anybody else notice though that he was rushing throws he didn't need mm -hmm. to rush not comfortable yeah. not comfortable at all like th there was a play where he rolled out and he did some weird roll to the backside shoulder and then he had all the time in the world and Sam Laporta opened the back of the end zone and then didn't even throw it in a place where he could catch it mm -hmm, yeah. just threw it away for no reason so it was weird stuff like that where he was throwing the ball early he had a, an, another second and he would have had the guy in stride and he kind of threw it and turned away but he wasn't about to get hit mm -hmm. and so I that it felt very uncomfortable very weird because yeah. it's almost the exact same offensive line you know and mm -hmm. and Jared Goff is a guy who stood in there pretty well last year and yeah. delivered a lot of late throws so we'll get into golf in just a little bit but let's hear from Dan Campbell he took some accountability after the loss for the for the gaff before the half where the offense was trying to spike and the special teams unit runs out there just just very weird game all around here's more from the team after that L against Tampa Bay. You know, I asked for improvement from last week uh, was the story. And we did improve. We did improve. And uh, their coach cost them. Their head coach cost them this one. I think that's a good team. I think we fought hard. I think we didn't make enough plays. I think we had, you know, too many mistakes. And, um, and they had less mistakes than we did. And, and, and ultimately, at the end of the game, we kind of had a chance to win it a couple times there. but. 
it just wasn't enough. And uh, they're a good team. We're a good team. It's early in the season. It'll be definitely a learning experience for sure for us. Games like this really help you hone in on the details because, again, like I said, like it, it felt like we were moving the ball. Um, but then when it comes down to the details of let's get the ball in the end zone, it just didn't happen. Um, so we had multiple opportunities there at the end of the game to go and win it. Um, and I mean, we just didn't do enough. They did not do enough. So as we sit here on this Monday, Dan Campbell, as we said, taking accountability for this loss. But who do you think takes the most blame after what happened against Tampa Bay? Dan Campbell is being a good general and going down for his troops. But while he does share some of the blame as the head coach, he is not the person that no. I'm pointing at. At most, he's third because the two guys who stood out the most to me were Jared Goff and Ben Johnson. Two guys who I am not worried about necessarily in the long term. I mean, we're talking about proven guys. Ben Johnson has been one of the best play callers in the league. But this week, they, the game plan and the execution just did not make any sense to me. Jared Goff looked bad on his throws, but what was more concerning was the lack of situational execution. You talk about the play before the half. They were on the 17-yard line. Why would you risk a throw with no timeouts to the middle of the field just to get eight yards closer? I mean, sure, he did get the spike off in time, so it shouldn't have mattered, but the risk-reward there didn't warrant it. Then you go to the final drive of the game where they had 33 seconds oh, left, man. and he's dinking and dunking the ball to the middle of the field. That cost them their last time out for nine yards. That cost them... 13 of their last 27 seconds for another nine yards. And then in the final three plays, they never even took a shot to the end zone. So it's not just the fact that he didn't throw the ball well. It's the fact that it was like the game plan didn't even really give the Lions a chance. Yeah. Go, go ahead. I just feel like, the you know, one of the keys to the Lions' success last year was that they dictated the game, mm -hmm. right? That offensive line, they controlled everything. And it seems like coming into the Bucks game, and even to some degree the Rams game was similar, they let the Bucks dictate everything. Yeah. And they knew that the secondary was beat up, right, for the Bucks. Yep. And even though the Lions are built to run the ball, they just decided, oh, we're not going to do that. You're today. missing Antoine Winfield Jr. Let's chuck it yeah, down the field 55 just, times. But let's you're also just, missing yeah. Vita Vea, like when he went out. And Kalaja Kanti. That's two strong defensive the linemen. Ball. There was that point in the fourth quarter, I thought, okay, they were they were down, what was it, three? They were, I think, I think or... They, they had a chance in the fourth quarter to, like, start milking the clock. And I thought that, okay, yeah. this is what we're going to see, just like we saw last week, David Montgomery and that offensive line dictate this game, and that's where they're going to seal the deal, and then the defense is going to hold them at the end. That's what I the thought The boa constrictor. Happen. It's what they did in overtime. Yeah. It's yeah. what they did to so many teams last year because every, time, every week we were getting on here and saying, well, it was ugly, but the Lions won again. Yeah. Well, it was ugly, but the Lions beat another good team. And this time it was like – it was like they had, you know, Jared Goff passing yards as a prop bet. It was so weird <laughs> yeah. to see him chucking the ball all the, all over the yard, all over the field when Jameer Gibbs was running mm -hmm. the ball well and David Montgomery ran the ball well so so well last week. I just don't understand it. I mean, I, I, I like, what is Ben Johnson doing with this offense right now? The the rush. It's not like the the running game isn't working for them. You know, it'd be one thing if if uh, you know Gibbs and Montgomery were getting stuffed and they were like, right. guess we got to throw the ball. Yeah. <laughs> that's not the case. The running game has been the key to the, to success all of last year, and it won them in week won them the game in week one, and then it was working fine in week two when yeah. they used it, and then they just moved away from it again. And I. I I, it's unfathomable. I don't understand. And Jared Goff was, quote unquote, kept clean because they didn't sack him yesterday. But still, he took some hits. Yeah. I mean, what was it? Two, two roughing the passer calls. Every time he would drop back, it seemed like he was getting some pressure in his face. And I've talked to you guys about it. I think that Jared Goff playing with a lead and Jared Goff playing from behind are two completely different quarterbacks. Something is different. And I don't know what it is. You, you could see it yesterday. You could yeah. see, you know, he didn't get sacked, but he got hit multiple times. And like we said before, the way he was kind of getting rid of the ball sooner than he should have. And in situation, like dumping the ball over the middle with clock issues is not a Dan Campbell thing. This no. is a Jared Goff making bad decisions. And, and I'm not worried about it long term at all because we've seen who these guys are. But I was just concerned, like, is this – now you have to worry about this Jared Goff showing up again. Yeah. That's what mm -hmm. you have to worry about. I two interceptions. The first one, maybe not that, his fault that, because J-Mo looks like he, his, his route was impeded. But the yeah. second one, though, he just kind of sailed it. I don't know if it was miscommunication or not, but that thing just kind of sailed right into, like, a nice zone coverage that the Bucks had and went the other way. It's what we know is Jared Goff's <clears throat> weakest thing, right? It, if he's not comfortable, he's a terrible quarterback. And that's what got, that's what got him ran out of L.A. Mm -hmm. I mean – Last year, it really worked because the offensive line kept him clean. He rarely ever got hit. 
he stood in, made the made the throws. The minute he gets rattled, he turns into a completely different quarterback. And uh-huh. even though he didn't take a sack yesterday, I mean, he almost took a couple sacks. He got the ball out, you know, well, one of them, he got the ball out perfectly into a bus yeah. defender. <laughs> what a throw. Yeah. <laughs> but once he, once in his mind, like he's in the, he's on the run, even if he's not, like you were talking about, there were so many plays where he looked uncomfortable for no reason when he had a solid pocket, but he rushed the throws. And it was another one in the red zone. I mean, he went to JMO on the, on the front right pylon yeah. and he was double covered. But then there, yeah. there were. I, I looked back, and there, there were some other guys that weren't even done with their breaks yeah. yet, and he was, and he was rushing that throw. You just yeah, that was early, right? Yeah, yeah I, I think that, that was second drive. Yeah, second drive. Yeah. yeah, he's just not making the progressions. Also, oh, not also Sam Laporta, you, you brought him up. It was three targets and Where two catches. Sam I mean, he had, he had a nice catch on that drive that tied the game against the Rams. But aside from from that, we have. Rarely heard Sam Laporta's name called already this season. There was a play in the red zone where a pass play where Sam Laporta was kept in to, for to block, extra protection. Yeah. Like, what are we? What are we doing? <laughs> yeah. They'll never like, see the it. Part coming. of the part of the thing about not having enough receivers was you had Sam Laporta. Right. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to use him to block, and that's not his best feature. Let's be honest. Like there were multiple times yesterday where run plays got blown up because Sam Laporta missed blocks. So uh, you're not keeping him in because he's a great blocker either. Get him the ball. I don't. I just. It, like you said earlier, it doesn't make. They don't know who who they are, what they're trying to do. They. I know we want to get Jamo the ball more mm-hmm. deep, which is great, but why are, the play action has completely disappeared? I, it, it's almost like they have so many weapons that they don't know how to share all the snaps. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, a lot of people would say that's a good problem to have, but it. It truly seems like a problem at times for this offense. I think that's the kind of problem that you have for a few games and then things get sorted out once Mm -hmm. everybody's roles kind of solidify. So, like I said, I'm not concerned, but it is it has been ugly the first two games. So it's something that they need to get fixed quick because you can't afford to start off much slower than, you know, one and one in the NFL. The one of the biggest things that concerns me is last year the Lions' uh, strongest point was the, the middle of the field, right? And you could just see it. Teams are zeroing in on that, even versus the versus the Rams and then versus the Bucks. Every time Goff went to the middle of the field, chaos, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. absolute chaos. He didn't. He, they haven't been able to do that at all. I mean, I'm pretty sure two two of the picks have come from trying to work the middle of the field, mm-hmm. and then obviously the one who went right to the again to the Bucks yeah. defender, mm-hmm. but. That is that is something that defenses have really, really targeted, and the Lions have to adjust to that. They can't just keep throwing it in there. And Goff seems to, again, he's not going through the progressions. They're not adjusting the play calling. So he's trying to he's trying to force it down to the middle of the field where he's comfortable. And he's just gonna keep getting picked off. Five times yesterday the Lions faced third or fourth and medium, and Goff completed a pass short of the sticks. And oh, and, was... and the Bucks were just content to let them do that. Mm-hmm. So I don't think every defense they play is going to be as well equipped as the Bucks are to play that type of defense. But the Lions were sort of falling into a trap where it was like Jared Goff thought he heard footsteps, dump off to Jameer Gibbs, two guys there to tackle him, fourth and three, you got a punt. Yeah. Stuff like that. So it's just the third down struggles just know no bounds, but you feel pretty good about them figuring it out. I, I know. I, I hope you're right about teams not being able to do everything that Tampa did the whole season, but through the first two weeks of the NFL season, and something Kurt Herbstreit mentioned during the Bills-Dolphins game is a lot of teams are playing a lot more two safeties deep and making you beat them in front of the beat, – beat them in front of you, keeping short passes, mm-hmm. which works for the lines for Laporta and St. Right. Brown as long as you're running the ball to move the linebackers up. And if you're not, then you're sitting guys immediately in those places where Laporta and St. Brown work the best. Yeah. And you're not giving J-Mo time to get down the field to where he works the best. It all is based on the running game, setting it up and establishing it and running play action. I am sure Hobie can tell mm-hmm. you the, the best offense in the NFL through two weeks, the New Orleans Saints are also the number one play action team in the NFL through two weeks. Derek and Carr throwing darts. Man. This is, and Alvin Kamara too, but, but again, this is the, not the, an run, the run and the pass are, are coordinated. It's a coordinated attack. I would much rather be in the Lions position where you have the pieces to do that and you just aren't than to be a team that doesn't have the pieces. So 100%. Yes, they sure. have yeah. the pieces. They can, they can fix this next week. They yep. just have to do it. I think they'll figure it out. I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I'm not 
this, I'm not hitting the panic button at all. Yeah. But I am surprised that we're here talking about the Agreed. offense because yeah. it was not even on our radar as an issue. No. No. Yeah. And when the defense plays as well as they did yesterday, yeah. the line should win every game the defense plays that well. Yeah. And come, we'll take a quick break first up, and we'll talk about the defense when we come back, especially Aiden Hutchinson, mm -hmm. who had just an absolutely phenomenal day. And we'll take a look at the Cardinals too. We've got that coming up on Detroit Sports Plus.